Scar Audio is the current king of budget subwoofers. Are they about to get dethroned? This right here is Scar's entry level 12, the SDR. It typically runs about 90 bucks on Amazon and it is without a doubt the budget king. Before today, if you were to ask me for the best budget subwoofer or a good starter sub, I would probably recommend the SCAR SDR-12. But then Hyenka reached out to me and asked me to review their 12 inch subwoofer. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Is it H-Yanka? Is it hi yanka If anybody knows, tell me down in the comments. For just a few bucks more than the SCAR, you can step up to a sub that claims to handle 50% more power. Let's crack it open and find out if it's the new budget king. Well, we are not starting out on the right foot. You can see right here that the packaging has failed. Let's be honest, that's not a big deal. Shipping is kind of a rough and tumble business and I get damaged packages all the time. Mm, but, <laughs> Iyanka sent one of their 10 inch models to another content creator, a guy named Jerry Ain't Loud, and his had the exact same issue. I don't know if that's enough to establish a pattern. I hope not. You can't dethrone the king if your sub arrives damaged. Now, just like the SCAR, the Hyanka is available in both dual 2 ohm and dual 4 ohm configurations. Hyanka offers a 10 and a 12, but SCAR's got a much larger product lineup. At the time of filming, the Hyanka 12 is out of stock. The sub is such a great value that every time Amazon gets some in stock, they sell out almost immediately. I asked Hyanka when they'd be back in stock and they said this week. So you should be able to order one by the time this video drops. A common question that I get, should you go with the dual two ohm or the dual four ohm? That depends. In general, what you wanna do is get an amplifier that's one ohm stable and wire that amp to one ohm. So you can take a single dual two ohm and match it up with something like say a JP8 amplifier from Down for Sound. If you go with a single SCAR, you'd get the dual two ohm and you'd have to match it with a smaller amp. I would recommend the Legis Audio or the Recoil if you're trying to stick to a tight budget. If you wanna run two subwoofers, get a pair of the dual four ohm subs, then you can wire everything in parallel and run your amplifier at one ohm. So squeezing the most possible power out of that amp. And of course, you'll need to jump up to a bigger amp for two subwoofers. One thing I do like about the Hyanka, the manual includes a complete set of TS parameters as well as an impedance plot. I've reviewed a lot of other brands that provide little to no specs, so kudos to Hyanka for taking the time to do this the right way. Let's check out the sub. The first thing that jumps out is the sparkly cone and the red stitching along the surround. Comparing it side by side with the SCAR, we see the SCAR has a fatter surround. Both subwoofers have sewn in tensile leads. And the big difference between the two is the frame. The SCAR uses a stamped frame, while the Hyanka has this really nice cast frame. If the frame looks familiar to you, it's because it's a fairly standard off of the shelf frame, but it is a major upgrade from the frame that the SCAR is using. One thing you'll notice if you look at the frame real close, you can see that there is a retaining ring that helps hold down the spider. And the spider has this cool red stitching. Not that it matters, no one's gonna see the spider. And again, I've seen this exact same frame used on other subwoofers. And that's the important thing to remember about the Hyanka. At the end of the day, it is a parts bin subwoofer. There are several other brands that use a suspiciously similar sparkly comb with red stitching along the surround. American Bass, for example, has one that looks almost identical. That's not a bad thing. If you're trying to build and then market a subwoofer at an attractive price point, you're gonna have to build a parts bin subwoofer. As long as those parts are quality and are a good match for each other, the subwoofer is gonna perform just fine. Putting the SCAR and the Hyanka side by side, we do see that the SCAR has more mounting depth. The SCAR surround is both taller and wider. You might think that means the SCAR has more excursion. Well, the XMEX for the Hyanka is either 14 or 15 millimeters, depending on the voice coil configuration, and the SCAR has 13.5. So no, the size of the surround is not an indicator of how much the subwoofer can move. The Hyanka is noticeably heavier than the SCAR. I don't know if that's all due to the basket or if that's due to the magnet. One little bit of curiosity here, hi Fi Vega pointed this out in his review. This sub has an Amazon logo on the bottom of the magnet and one on the retail box. But on this box here that it was shipped in, you can see that it says FBA. That stands for Fulfillment by Amazon. That means this is not an Amazon brand or a product. Amazon sells a lot of branded products. They typically call them Amazon Basics. 
So no, it's not an Amazon brand. In other words, it's not an inventory item on Amazon's balance sheet. This item is sold by some other company and then Amazon provides a fulfillment service that allows businesses to outsource the fulfillment of an item to Amazon. So the inventory is on Hayanka's balance sheet and it's gonna sit in an Amazon warehouse until Amazon ships it out on Hayanka's behalf. And just for clarity, I asked Hayanka what was up with that. They said, and I quote, the subwoofer is shipped by Amazon, so there is an Amazon logo on the package. Now, personally, I take issue with that. It leaves the consumer to believe that this is an Amazon brand, when in reality, Hyanka is attempting to borrow credibility from Amazon. But does any of that really matter as long as the subwoofer works? Before we find out, let's verify that it is indeed a dual two-ohm subwoofer. I'm gonna go ahead and load this into a prefab enclosure that I just happen to have laying around. I'll be sure to give you a link up here to the video where I reviewed this enclosure, as well as a link to everything I use in the video down in the video description. To power the subwoofer, I just happened to have this big ass JP23 amp installed in the truck and ready to roll. So let's find out what it can do. On the left, you'll see the SMD AMM1 handheld amp dyno, and on the right, you see an SPL Labs mini bass meter. Both are in peak hold mode, and the SPL meter is currently displaying frequency. Let's give it some power and see what happens. Okay, so this thing soaked up 2,170 watts at 2.3 ohms. And we got about 132 dB on the windshield. Now the official power rating for the JP23 is 2,300 watts into a one ohm load. And as you can see, this amp is an absolute beast. It can almost hit the one ohm number at just slightly over two ohms. And the Hyanka had no trouble at all soaking up that short burst of power about two and a half times its power rating. Let's try 50 hertz. 133 dB with similar power numbers. If you want to see how well the SCAR performs, make sure you stick around to the end of the video. And again, at 40 hertz, we get a similar result. Before we talk about sound quality, I want to take a second to thank all of my patrons over on Patreon. I couldn't afford things like SPL meters and amp dynos without their support. As always, I want to give a special shout out to my $25 patrons, Bo, David T, Bam Bam, Dylan, Fargo, JD America, and Baba. If you would like to support DIY audio content, join these guys over on Patreon. Now I can't tell you for sure how this subwoofer will hold up long-term, but I've been riding around for about a week, throwing a lot of power to it and just generally abusing this subwoofer. And so far it's held up just fine. Now the music you're hearing right now is the actual sound captured through a Rode Wireless Go microphone. It's really hard to convey sound quality over YouTube, and of course sound quality is 100% subjective. But to my ears, it sounds a lot cleaner than the SCAR. That combined with the higher power rating make this the new budget king. Hopefully they'll get their problems with their packaging sorted out. And if they do, I'm pretty confident to say I would choose this subwoofer over the SCAR. Click over here to see my review of the SCAR subwoofer. Tell me down in the comments if you think the High Inca is the new budget king. Click right here to subscribe. I'm Justin. This is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel, and I will see you on the next adventure.